Welcome to Financial Accounting Chapter 13. Alexander here to help you through it. This can be sometimes a tough chapter. It's uh, stocks, corporations. It's really important though to know. Before taking this, I didn't know much about stocks. I thought it was just something you buy, you bought and traded. No, it's actually a lot to it. It there's a whole world of beyond the stock market. There's actually the book, like how it impacts the books of a company. So we'll start with introduction. And this is about Hasbro. I love these little introduction things. It explains so much. So if you purchase a share of stock from Hasbro, you own a small interest in the company. You may request Hasbro, uh, you may request a Hasbro stock certificate as an indication of your ownership. As you may know, Hasbro is one of the world's largest toy manufacturers and produces popular children's toys such as G.I. Joe, Play-Doh, Tonka Toys, Mr. Potato Head, and Nerf. Some big stuff. You go to Toys R Us, you're going to see all this. In addition, Hasbro manufactures family entertainment products such as Monopoly, Scrabble, and Trivial Pursuit under the Milton Bradley and Parker Brothers labels. All three of those games are great games, teach you a lot too, they're very fun. I always recommend a family night. In fact, the stock certificate of Hasbro has a picture of Mr. Monopoly, the Monopoly game icon printed on it. I'll show you that. It's kind of funny. See, it's a stock. It's backwards to you, but stock certificate. There's a uh, there's a Mr. Monopoly guy on the stock certificate. That is a, just a great little addition. Um, purchasing a share of stock from Hasbro may be a great gift idea for the hard to shop for person. However, a stock certificate, it's a good idea, I never thought about that. Uh, however, a stock certificate represents more than just a picture that you can frame. In fact, the stock certificate is a document that reflects legal ownership of the future financial prospects of Hasbro. In addition, as a shareholder, it represents your claim against the assets and earnings of the corporation. If you're purchasing Hasbro stock as an investment, you should analyze the Hasbro's financial statements and management's plans for the future. Always do that before you invest in a company. Dig a little deeper. Um, for example, Hasbro has a unique relationship with Disney that allows it to produce and sell licensed Disney products. Should this Disney relationship affect how much you're willing to pay for the stock? Also, you might want to know if Hasbro plans to pay cash to dividends or whether management is considering issuing additional shares of stock. This chapter describes and illustrates the nature of corporations, including the accounting for stocks and dividends. So this will aid you in making decisions of whether you want to buy the stock. So great, great, uh, fun company. So basically, most businesses are organized, or most large businesses are going to be corporations. They represent only about 20% of all businesses in, a, in the United States, but they take in more than 90% of total US dollars. So they make more money than a whole bunch of smaller businesses put together. Corporations pay, they pay a lot of in taxes too. So we need corporations to fuel the United States economy a lot of times because they're keeping us afloat with all the taxes they pay. So that's why corporations are so useful because small businesses, yeah, it's good to have the, the small guys and we have a lot of them. 80% of businesses are those, but they don't generate as much money as a big company. And so a corporation is a legal entity. It's separate from its owners, which means it can buy assets, sell assets, incur liabilities, enter into contracts, just like you and I could. It's, a, it's like a human. It's, a, it's, a, it's an entity. It's, its, own, it's almost an individual. Um, and most importantly, though, this is the kicker, it can sell shares of stock or share pieces of ownership called stock. This gives corporations the ability to generate large sums of capital or cash to help run it, to help get it going. Um, stockholders are owners, um, legal owners of the company. They have limited liability, which means if the company goes under, it gets sued, um, it goes bankrupt, the people who own the, the company, the shares, are protected, the corporate shield where you can have whatever the, the corporation owns, but my personal assets are safe. Most of the time, sometimes they might find a way around that if they can prove 
you had something to do with it, but most of the time you're safe. Um, let me see. Oh, uh, an example of that would be if you were an officer, like uh, Arthur Anderson, who, if you committed fraud, but were also an owner, they could still find a way to get you because they could tie it back to you. But uh, the breakdown of the chain of command is stockholders, board of directors, officers, and employees. So stockholders vote for the board of directors. The board of directors vote in the officers, and the officers pick their, their, their vote in the employees. Pick the employees. Now this is important. If your company ever gets bought out, what can happen is if the company buys you out, they're going to um, put in their own board of directors. Those board of directors are going to put in their own officers, and those officers are going to put in managers of your in your store who may or may not clear you out to put in employees that they want. So that's what can happen is when a company buys out another company and the majority of their shares, a hostile takeover, it's very common nowadays, uh, they'll clean house. They'll get rid of all the original people, start fresh. Which is sad, but sometimes you have to do it. Um, as a separate entity though, corporations, uh, C-Corps get double taxed. So they get taxed on what they earn and then when you get a dividend from that company, you get taxed on that dividend. That's a double tax. Um, S corps don't get double taxed. Neither do the proprietors, sole proprietors, or partnerships. It's the the C corp that's the differenting uh, thing. So they do pay a lot more in taxes. Um, so that's why people who don't like oh corporations are mean or cruel. Well, they pay a lot. Uh, to keep our country going. So you form a corporation, you have to pick a state that you want the charter to be based in. Um, like Amazon is based in Seattle, uh, Washington, but um, Caterpillar is in Illinois. So where you start your charter, where you incorporate, depends on how many taxes you're going to pay, how uh, you're going to be subject to that state's laws. And so it's a big choice. Um, but you start your corporate charter and then, but that's why sometimes if you're working for a corporation, you'll get HQ will contact you from a way far away state telling you what to do because the HQ is the one that runs the big, uh, the majority of the business and then they delegate to all the individual stores or locations. So basically, um, you'll pay for the charter. Um, or uh, you pay organizational expenses to start up in cash or in stock. You can start paying for stuff in stock. Uh, the new the new thing is you're going to have owner's equity. is now stockholder's equity or shareholder's equity or on the balance sheet. So what you'll do is you'll have common stock. You'll have uh, paid in capital, common stock, and then most likely par value, which is the token sum of the, the, the each share, and then retained earnings, which is Basically, net income. So anything you you gain will be net. will be retained earnings. You'll be, you'll close it out to retained earnings. Okay. So stock gives you common stock allows you to vote. So you can vote for um, board of directors. You can vote in matters concerning the corporation. Um, you can you you have a right to share in the distribution of earnings. Um, um, the share in uh, share in assets upon liquidation. Um, then there's preferred stock, which doesn't get to vote normally and gets a set amount of dividends. Uh, because uh, preferred stockholders get dividends first, but they get a set amount capped. And it can also be accumulative, where if you didn't pay a dividend in a certain year, they still get that dividend from a past year. So the next time you pay a dividend, you got to pay the back year of dividends. And, there will be a problem. You know, we'll get into that. Uh, but common stock gets what's left over in dividends. So preferred is better if you're looking for a more fixed income. Common is better if they paid a lot more in dividends and you'll get a lot more after preferred gets paid. Uh, you issue stock. Let's say 10,000 shares of $100 preferred stock um, and you get a large amount of cash. So here they had a journal entry. Cash is 1,500,000. Preferred is 
Preferred stock is, uh, cr uh, that's cash is debited. Preferred stock is credited for 500,000. Common stock is credited for 1 million. So they had part of it preferred, part of it common. So you basically issued shares out for cash. That's what's happening. And that's what your books are going to reflect. As your cash goes up, your equity goes up. Um, if you sell a stock for more than its par, which happens, that's the majority of things. Par is just a very low value set to it. And then anything over that is a, a premium, which normally it's good, that's what's going to happen. There's not going to be a discount a lot of times. You're not going to sell a stock for below its par. Um, so let's say you sold a par value $50 stock for 55 So your cash will be uh, 2,000 shares of that. You'll be $110,000 cash, $100,000 in preferred stock, and then $10,000 in prefer paid in capital and excess of par preferred stock. So paid in capital excess of par is the overage of the preferred. Uh, no par is just you take the whole value that it – Instead of having paid in capital over par with no par, you just take the, the amount of cash, throw it into the common and as a credit, and you debit cash. Very simpler. So that's how you do a journal entry for that. Dividends, if you're doing a cash dividend, paying out per share of, to the owners, you're going to debit cash dividends for the amount, credit cash dividends payable for the amount. And then when you pay it, you'll debit the cash dividends payable and credit the cash, showing it's going out the door. A stock dividend basically means you're giving out instead of cash, you're giving out a stock, a certain amount of stocks. So you're basically giving more stocks to the shareholders, which is good too if you don't want to have to give them cash. It will, giving out more shares though dilutes the equity. So it makes it to where you'll get less per share in earnings. It makes your ratios go down a bit, but it's up to the this, who's issuing them. So you div stock dividends, you just debit stock dividends for the amount of the, the value of the stock, credit stock dividends distributable, and then credit the paid in capital and excess of par for the value that's over the par value, once again. And then, of course, you debit stock dividends distributable, credit common stock when you're ready to give them out. Um, treasury stock is when the company buys back their own shares. So you debit treasury stock for the amount that you're buying and excuse me, and credit cash me, for the, uh, I had too much oatmeal, credit cash for the, for the amount that you're um, giving out. And then when you sell those treasury stocks, you're going to get the cash back, take the treasury stock off as a credit and then credit the paid in capital so there is a painting you can actually make a profit off of buying your shares back as a company and selling them back for a higher amount which is done a lot um reporting them the balance sheet looks a lot similar it just has the common stock preferred stock and the paid in capital plus retained earnings minus treasury stock treasury stocks always deducted and then stock splits is just Let's say you have a piece of pie. You have four shares worth $100 par, so 400 total par value. After you do a five to one stock split, you'll have 20 shares at $20 a par value, still worth 400 total par value. So when someone stock splits, all they're doing is taking the value of the stock and dividing it in half to double what there is. Companies do this all the time. Microsoft has I think, doubled multiple, multiple times. Because if they didn't, their share one share price would be worth so much that it'd be hard for investors to get into it. Um, the same, but some companies don't do that. Like I think well, Berkshire Hathaway or something doesn't split it, so they're still worth hundreds of thousands of dollars per share. So that's why people stock split. It doesn't change the total value of the equity. It just makes it to where there's more shares available for a lesser price easier to get in. And then finally, financial analysis, earnings per share is net income minus preferred dividends divided by the average number of common shares outstanding. That's your earnings per share, how much you, how much income you earned per share you have. And then 
Oh, I guess that was it. And then, so that was chapter 13. Um, I'm going to do a problem, of course. I'm going to pick probably a big problem that goes over, tries to hit each kind of transaction. I'm going to do some journal entries that hits each one of these so you get a good idea. I'll do them on the board. So that you know how to do treasury stocks, you know how to do how to issue shares, you know how to, you can sell treasury stocks, so, and you so you know how to do a dividend. That's usually the most important. The journal entries took people off. So that'll be for I'll probably do that next week. And I'm gonna start trying to do a video a week again. Cause I want you guys to be able to to, com to comprehend it. And I hope you all had a good new year. Sorry, I've been so busy going to Evergreen. I'm trying to, I want to get my bachelor so I can get my CPA. And so, just glad you guys are still holding in there. And um, I'll be back for the problem. Thank you. Alexander, adios.